And then we're going to go ahead and start discussing the mobile app. So the first things first is I want to give you a brief explanation of what the mobile app is. So the Edge mobile app is a viewer. Now this is specifically meant for your clients to be able to view your presentations no matter what device they're on. Now currently there are two versions of the Edge mobile app. There's an iOS version, which means that if they have an iPhone or an iPad, they'll be directed to the App Store to download the app, and that'll allow them to view these flash presentations on their iOS device. There's also an Android app. So if they're on an Android device, when they click on one of your links, it's going to take them to the Android store, the Google Play store, and they'll be prompted to download and install the app. So for today, I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like. So let me get my iPad into view for you. Just a moment here. All right, so let me collapse a couple of screens. There we go. So you guys should be seeing my iPad right now, and you can see that uh, this is actually showing you a live version of what you're seeing on my iPad. So this part right here, you can see this should look familiar to you if you do have an iPad already. These are all your main screens. Uh, of course, you can swipe between them. You guys are used to using these, so I'm not going to train you on iPad apps today, but I am going to train you on what the Edge mobile app looks like. So to see what a consumer would get when they first try to click on one of your links, what I'm going to do is I've actually sent myself a bunch of links via email. And I've called it Edge Presentations. And you can see what I've done, and I would encourage you all to do this, is you want to build a couple of scenarios like I've done here. And actually, I just grabbed these from our Hall of Fame. So these are Hall of Fame videos. But you want to build your own. And you want to have a rent versus own. You want to have a cost of waiting maybe an MI option comparison. You want to have an open house flyer so you can show the co-branding. And then you want to have kind of a generic one that's a message to your prospects. Um, of course, feel free to add more on there if you, uh, if you feel that there are more that, uh, that would benefit your conversations. But I do want to show you what it looks like when the client clicks on one of these. So let's say I am the client. I've just received an edge, an edge link from you, the, the, my loan originator. And when I go to click on this link, I'm literally going to tap it on my iPad and what it's going to do is it's going to direct me to the App Store. And it's going to tell me it looks like you don't have our app yet. It is available, so all you have to do is click on this button. So I'm going to click on that button. This is going to take me over to the App Store. And you can see that this goes directly there. It automatically finds the right app for you. So all you have to do is click on this little cloud here. And that's going to start downloading and installing. And you can see that it starts spinning there. And once this is done, you'll see this entire circle will fill out. And that means the app is installed. So we'll wait for that to complete real quick. And then once it's installed, I'm going to go back and click on that link again, and it'll open up that presentation inside the app. So the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to be aware of what the client experience is so that when they ask you questions about it, you'll know exactly what to say to them. So now, at this point, they can open the app, and they can manually enter your link into the app. But there's an easier way. They can actually just get out of the screen, Go straight back over to that email that you sent them, or text for that matter. You can text your Edge links to them, and if they're on a, an iPhone or an Android phone, they can click on that link from the text, and it'll do the same thing as if they were clicking on it from uh, your email. So I'm going to go ahead and click that top link, and you can see it automatically opens up the app, and it goes straight into the presentation. Now I'm going to pause this for right now. Now, all of these presentations that I'm using today are available in the Edge Hall of Fame, so I'll show you where to go and grab those if you wanted to check out what other people are doing with this. But you can see it automatically fires up the report, it starts your video, and you're talking to them. So keep this in mind when you're doing your video recording. You want to make sure that you understand that they're not only going to be viewing this on a browser, which is, you know, pretty common, but everybody's carrying around mobile devices today. So they're likely going to view this on their mobile device as well. So you want to keep this in mind when you're talking about it in the video. You want to let them know. You know, if you're viewing this from a mobile device, you're going to see a little bit different layout than you would see in your browser. But the quadrants are all the same. You still have a summary quadrant. You still have net monthly payments, uh, rent versus principal. And then you have a net worth in the long term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what each one of these looks like. Now, this one in particular is a rent versus own report. When we go to our, uh, our summary, and actually, let's see here, we've got, uh, we've got rent, which is showing NAs for a lot of the fields because obviously there's no loan amount and such. Uh, but we do have things like 
you can see we've got tax benefit shown. If I had entered a standard deduction, it would actually show a tax benefit on the rent side. I chose, or this, this person actually chose not to on this particular report. But you can see our net monthly payments against each other, our purchase prices, and you can actually scroll up and down by dragging your finger on, on the actual uh, iPad. So you can, you can move this around by, by literally just dragging it. Now, back inside the summary, there's one more option I wanted to show you. There is a payment stream right here. And when you click on that, it pops open a little box and shows them the exact payments that are going to be, be accompanying this loan. Now, for compliance reasons, this is really important to have there. It's always going to appear no matter what. There's no way to disable that, so it is going to be there. So you want to be aware it's there so you know how to explain this to your client. Now, this, this is pretty straightforward because it's a fixed loan with no MI. Uh, so we've got 359 payments, and then we've got one true and final payment uh, to pay off the remaining balance of the loan. Now when they click back, it's going to take them right back to the same screen. Now at that point, they can click on the payment breakdown, and they can see exactly what's entailed in this particular loan product that you're showing them. They can then jump over to closing costs, and in this case, you can see that we're only showing upfront MIP. We have a contribution against it, and for this particular report, uh, this originator did not include any APR or non-APR costs. Normally, you would include these. Um, now if this is a marketing presentation, you always want to disclaim yourself. Obviously, you know the costs are going to be pretty close, but it might change at time of close or depending on uh, you know how they qualify. If there's any extra rate hits and such, um, but always disclaim yourself. Anytime you're you're putting out a pre-GFE quote, is that look, guys, you know we don't have all the information yet, but once we get all the information, we'll drill it down to an exact number for you. Now, if you had chosen to do a reinvestment, you can click over on the reinvestment area, and it will show you all the details of what you're doing. So if I had done a term reduction payment, it would show up right here, and it would alter my freedom point, of course. Now, savings, that, that's the lower part here. That's their current savings account. And then if I had shown a reinvestment into a new investment vehicle, you can see that that's at the very bottom here. But notice, I'm dragging up and down to get the entire screen. This is a fairly large screen, so make sure you're aware that it can move around. Now they can hit the back button in the top left and that's going to take them straight back over to the intro page here. At this point they can drill into the net monthly payments. And you can see what we're looking at on rent versus own. The net monthly payment is their total pity payment minus the tax benefit and the principal paid on the, uh, on the home loan side. Now on the rent side it would be their rent minus any tax benefit that they would have from a standard deduction had you used it. This person did not use it. Now you'll notice that there's more info buttons at the top right corner. So you can actually hit more info and you can dive into the payment details. So you can see we've got our rate breakdown. It shows the APR here, uh, the term. And if there is, was any down payment, it looks like this one was 100% financing, so there was no down payment, but it would show it here. You can also see what our assumptions are down at the bottom. We're assuming a 5% rental increase, property appreciation of 3%, and a tax bracket of 25%. Now notice that these three items you can alter. So there are defaults that are in the system, uh, but you can alter these at any time. I'll show you that once we get into the system a little bit today. But you can actually go back to the graph either by swiping with your hand, just like I did. I know you can't see my hand, but I swiped from left to right. Or when you're in that screen, you can always tap the little graph button up at the top right here, and that'll take you back to the graph. Now I'm going to hit this back button here so I can get back into the main screen. And then I'm going to go to rent versus principal paid. Now when you click on that, you'll notice that rent is always going to be a negative figure here. Nobody wants to pay rent. They're not making a gain out of rent. So we're viewing this as a negative. Whereas the principal that they're paying on this new loan is a positive. They're keeping this in the form of equity. So we like to show the difference here that when you're renting, you're going to throw away $52,000 over this 24-month period of time. In that same period of time, under home ownership, you will have gained equity in the form of about $18,000. You can then drill into the more info sections. So you can see what the actual breakdown is, what our net costs are. You can see what we start with, a total payment. We subtract out the principal paid, subtract out the tax benefit, and the net costs for each side, these are the unrecoverable costs, interest, MI, and closing costs, are shown right here. On the rent side, that's obviously just the rent. On the home ownership side, this is just the interest MI and closing costs. There's no MI on this particular loan, so it's just interest and closing costs. Now, it does show the value of the property, and this is actually kind of a good point here. Make sure to point this out to your client. You know, as a renter, you don't have any real estate value. As a homeowner, even at the 24-month period of time, I've got 
I've got some real estate value going on because I've purchased this home. You can see what the loan balance would be there, and you can see what their total equity at that point is. So I've got $36,000 in equity versus zero on the rent side. Now if I go back, I can now get into the long-term area. The long-term area, this is what we were talking about. The net worth, that's, that's all equity here. Now net worth is going to be a combination of their total equity at this point plus any liquid assets that you developed for them. So if you're using a reinvestment strategy to funnel money back into their savings account or into a new investment vehicle, those liquid assets will be tacked onto the equity and that'll, comp that'll comprise their total net worth. Now if we go into the more info sections, we can see this in more detail. And it kind of looks a lot like the same thing that we were looking at earlier. It's just the long-term area. So this particular person made the long-term and the short-term exactly the same in the amount of the years. So it's showing the same numbers, but usually you're going to have two different sets of numbers here. All right, so that's our rent versus own report. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go straight back over to my email, and I'm going to open up that second one. It's a cost of waiting. And when I click on that, automatically fires into the app, gets it ready to roll. And you can see that it fires up the video just like the other one did. Now this one is a total cost analysis, so it looks a little tiny bit different. Same idea though, you've got four quadrants. I do want to point something out for you on the front page of these. There is a share report feature up here at the top left. So if your client or your realtor partner for that matter wants to share this report, they can actually just tap on share report. And I'll show you what that does. And uh, it'll ask if, you know, th this link has already been added to the clipboard, but how would you like to share it? Do you want to email it? Do you want to SMS it or do you want to cancel out? Now you can use this. If you wanted to text this directly to somebody, you would choose SMS and then you would enter that person's name and text it directly over to them. I'm going to cancel out for now. Now there's other areas right here that allow them to contact you directly. If, they're, uh, if they click on your email address, it's going to open up an email that goes directly to you. If they click on one of your phone numbers and they're on a phone, it'll actually call you. Now to drill into some of the information on this particular report, this is a cost of waiting. So we've got a buy now options and you can see that uh, Brad who did this report, he did a great job on the highlighting. He wanted to show exactly what the most critical components are of this presentation. Now you can highlight from any preview of an Edge presentation. So clicking on the live link isn't going to give you highlighting ability. However, when you're inside Edge and you click on preview, it'll open up a version of the report that allows you to highlight. Now he's done that. He's highlighted the rates across the board here and you can see he's got a wait six months option and then he shows you what's your buying power at 380k. You know, if you were looking at a 5% a, a rate, you know, we're not going to be able to get as much loan to get the same kind of uh, monthly payment as we're getting from the buy now option. So he's taking this in a little bit different direction than our normal cost of waitings, but very effective. Now when we go into the payment breakdown, kind of the same things we were looking at over on the rent versus own. We're looking at total pity payments. Um, and you can see that if there was any term reduction payments or investment payments, they'd be tacked on here and you'd get a total payment. We can go into the closing costs. And if you want to, you can actually click on the fee detail here. Yeah, you know, let's do that. There we go. So when I click on the fee detail, it does show you know what these fees are, whether they're financed in, who, who they're being paid by, and you can scroll up and down these screens to get to the different fees. And once you hit back, and obviously you can do that on every one of these products, that fee detail will pop up the different fees for those products. And then we can go to the reinvestment screen, and just like we were talking about before, you know it shows all the same detail that your reinvestment grid does on the browser-based version. So if you have earmarked any kind of reinvestments, which on this particular presentation, there's no reinvestment going on. But if there was, this would be a great place to drive the attention of your client to. Now I'm going to hit back, and I'm going to go over to our monthly payment area. And you can see what we're looking at here. What Brad's done is he's showing that if we waited six months, it's going to cost us $207 more on our pity payment. Now the equation he's making here on the buying power one is, what can you get at that 5% rate? You know, how much, how, how much does your buying power decrease by waiting? So you can see that these, these payments are obviously going to be fairly close to each other. Um, usually you can, get it, you can get it spot on, but Brad wanted to use round numbers on this particular presentation. And if we drill into our more info section, we get our total payments against each other. You can see where the APRs are listed. And then I'm going to head back and go to the short term. 
Now, short-term area, if you guys don't know how to explain this yet, you really need to know. So how this is done, and let me get over to our more info section so I can really isolate this for you. The short-term actual cost, so the total cost here, which is represented by this line right here, the total cost is a combination of the interest and MI that they're paying, it subtracts out any tax benefit if there was, and then it adds closing costs. So in this case, on the buying power 380, it's 139 plus the 7,000. That's what's giving us the total cost of 146. Now each one of these is totaled up and then compared against each other. The highest one is used as a benchmark, so that'll show a zero net savings. The other ones will show a savings against that option. All right, so let's get back over to our long term. Now long term, pretty straightforward. How much interest in MI are you going to pay with these different products? You can see obviously the wait six months is going to cost them a lot of interest because they're moving up on the, uh, on the interest rate. If we go into the more info, we can see the breakdown of exactly what's going on with these loans at the 10-year period of time. And uh, you can see where our total interest in MI, this, that's where the graphs are coming from right there. So we're going to hit back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this presentation. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this as if I was in front of a realtor partner right now. So I've, I've gotten the meeting with my realtor partner, and I'm trying to show them what kind of an advantage I can provide them by being a partner with them. Now, obviously, you want to show them the browser-based based versions as well, but when you're meeting them, you might be meeting at a coffee shop. You might be meeting somewhere where you don't have a laptop with you. So you've got to have a device that's able to show these. So either it's your phone, it's your iPad, it's your Android tablet, one of those, but you've got to make sure that you can collect email on it. And, of course, you want to make sure you have the Edge app installed. Now, when you're having the conversation with your realtor partner, as I showed you here, there's an easy way to get them to install this, and that's you have your particular Edge presentations that you want to demonstrate. So if they don't have a tablet or a device on them, you can show them on yours by simply clicking these links like we were doing. Now, if they do have a tablet on them, send them this email. Just shoot it straight over to them, and uh, let's see if I can get Reflector back there kind of died on me. Let's see what happened. Okay, there it goes. So you can actually send them this email. You know, when you, when you forward this over to them, you can have them click on a link and then run through the install process. And they can keep that email on hand so that when they're talking to their prospects, they can show them exactly what kind of presentations you can produce for them. Now, the cool part about this is that your branding carries through. So they're going to see it. When, when your realtor partner delivers this to one of their clients, the client clicks on it, not only are you going to get an edge alert that has been viewed, but you've now opened it up to a point where you're that realtor partner's client has a direct contact with you. They can click on your phone number. They can click on your email address and get directly to you. And they can see your video that's attached to this particular presentation. Now, the great part about this is when your realtor is showing this to other people, it's, look, my, my loan originator does this for all of his clients. You know, I'd like to make sure that you get the most information possible to make an educated loan decision. So check these out. Just drop them a line, send them an email, or send me an email, and I'll contact them on your behalf. But let's get something that's more, more specific to your scenario so we can make sure that you have every bit of information. Now, again, all they have to do is click on these links from their device. It's going to open that particular presentation. So the big task for you is creating these presentations. So now what I would advise here, and let me, uh, let me drop off of the uh, iPad sharing for a second here. What I would advise for you is check out our our Edge Hall of Fame. And you can do this by going to mortgagecoach.com, hover over community, and choose Edge Hall of Fame. And when you do this, you're going to see there's lots of examples in here. Uh, everything from, there's our MI options one that I had used. Uh, there's a good cost of waiting in there. This rate versus no cost refi, if you want to be able to show refinances. This is not only for purchases, so you can show a refi or a purchase at will. Now, I would advise, check all of these out. You know the videos are short because they don't allow for more than five minutes. So take a look at these, see what other people are doing, see how they're presenting this to their clients, to their realtor partners. Uh, you'll find that there's a couple down at the bottom here that are fairly new that are specifically directed towards say, for instance, co-branding. This is, this is a listing presentation. It's an open house flyer that, uh, that Will Rudloff did. And I, I'd like you guys to check this one out in particular because he's got a great video presence. 
and he's got a great way of explaining options. It's, uh, it's a good, good one to try and emulate. Uh, Patrick also did a great job. This is a marketing message to his prospects. And what I want you to focus on is that these people are not video engineers. They are loan originators who have just basically recorded a video with their advice. So check these out. Try and emulate them. Um, if, if you if you want to see a couple of good ones, Brad actually did a great why by now. That's the one we were looking at in the mobile app. Um, it's it's pretty cool. So check it out. He's he's he actually went back and forth with me quite a bit on getting this perfect, and he nailed it down. I mean, this is probably the best one I've seen him do, and I immediately told him I wanted to put him in the in the Hall of Fame for this one. And then Thomas recently came on, and this was his first Edge video presentation, and I was blown away. He actually chose a strategy saying, you know, is FHA right for the Simpsons? So he based this on the Simpsons family. It's a really cool way to look at it, but, you know, creative marketing approaches are your in. I mean, you've already got these really cool tools. You've got this awesome technology. Now you just got to put your own personal branding on it. You got your, your, your personal effect, you know, whatever you'd like to do. So check these guys out. They did a great job with this, and they can definitely help you with, uh, with creating some strategies for yourself. Now, when you, when you want to check out what strategies are available and how to create them, check out our support center. So when you're inside Edge, hit the Help button right here at the top right. This is going to take you directly over to our knowledge base. Now, if you want to look at strategies, this is your guy right here. You really just left-click on Strategies. This is going to drive you into all of them, so you can see how to build a cost of waiting, how to build a purchase power, points versus no points, move up buyer presentations, uh, purchase power by rate. This is kind of a new one that, that uh, what one of our more recent clients came up with. I thought it was a great idea, so I put it in here. Um, this is another one asking, how do you isolate freedom points? You know, if you want to do different freedom points for one loan and edge, it's a really cool comparison to be able to show somebody different levels of reinvestments to attain different types of freedom points. And again, this is all part of your conversation with the client when you're asking them what, what their goals are. You know, the first couple of screens inside the edge wizard, they, they, aren't, they aren't for us. They're for you. That's, that's data that you're collecting so that you can target a presentation specifically to what your client's goals are. Now there's there's quite a few in here that I would definitely urge you to take a look at. The annual mortgage review is a great one to do for all your past clients. It's obviously not a refi market right now, but you've got past clients and you want to make sure that they know you've still got their best interest in mind. Even if it's not the best time to refi, you want to show them what they would be able to get right now. And in fact, it actually helps you when current loan options are not as good as, as, uh, as what they have. So in that case, that just basically says, hey, I did a great job for you and uh, the loan options that are out there right now aren't, aren't sufficient to justify a refi, but I wanted to show you what was there. It's just top of mind so that uh, you know every year they know they're going to get one of these from you and they know they're in the best position possible. Now there's others in here that I, I would definitely ask you to check out just so you know how to do them, but these are all the strategies. Now when you want to get down to nuts and bolts, Say, for instance, you're, you're brand new to this. Obviously, you want to check out the first walkthrough videos, how to read the total cost analysis. This one is really important. If you have not watched this, check this out. You know, it's about a seven or eight minute video, but it goes through every quadrant on the total cost analysis and explains where the numbers come from. So you never want to get called on the carpet for something you don't know how to explain. So make sure and check this out if you haven't yet. Now, there's some advanced topics in here. Things like how to use the Edge reinvestment strategies, how to use Edge Live. Uh, Edge Live is very cool because it allows you to, to highlight and change things on the screen in real time, and it'll change on your viewer's end, whether they're on the mobile device or whether they're in the browser. So they'll get to see your changes in real time. Now, you guys have probably noticed if you tried to record any Edge videos yet, that it only captures what comes through your webcam. So that's your video and your audio. It does not capture your screen movements. So when you're mousing around thinking your client is seeing that, he's not. So keep that in mind. He's seeing what's coming through the video recorder. So Edge Live is the way to get around this. You get your client on the phone, have them click on your link, and then you dive into Edge Live, and you can start popping out the more info sections. You can start highlighting the options that you're looking at. So it's almost a real-time experience for your client. So rather than a screen share, you're basically just affecting what their browser is showing them. Now, I would also urge you, the frequently asked questions, there's a lot of them in here. I, I wouldn't say spend a whole bunch of time going through these, 
But if you ever do have a question, type in a keyword up here in the knowledge base search. Uh, it's going to search from all these categories. So say for instance, I want to learn how to do, uh, I want to learn how to do an arm. So I type in arm, and there's a bunch of these. How to enter a 5-1 arm, that's the nuts and bolts of how to put it together. You want to enter one that's already adjusted? This one will show you how. Can you show temporary buy-downs? Yeah, you're going to do it like an arm. Um, and then this is a common question, so I put it up here. You know, why is, why is my arm APR so high, so high? Well, the reason is it's you've chosen worst-case scenario, and our APR is based on the payment stream total transparency. So make sure you're aware of this when you're having your conversations with your borrower. Now you can choose best case scenario instead of worst case and it's going to look more like the APR that you see on your till. That said, these presentations are all showing you know the entire span of the loan. So in order to get an accurate picture of what the potential is for an arm, I'd always suggest you show them best and worst case. Alright, so Let's get over into Edge, and uh, I don't see any questions coming in yet, so I'm, I'm guessing you all are just riveted to the screen right now. <laughs> so I will continue looking for questions. Just let me know if you've got anything you, you specifically want to cover. Uh, I guess for today, I'm going to show you one of the basics and one of the staples that you, you definitely want to have in your arsenal, and that is the cost of waiting analysis. So I'm going to start off with a brand new client. Now you can make this an individual report or a marketing presentation. Now the difference between these is an individual presentation is going to ask you for specific borrower information and specific property address. The marketing, it strips those off the report. So all you're seeing is a headline and it completely removes the property address area. So you can repurpose it for anything you'd like. Ah, Ramesh's question, uh, is there an amortization schedule? Absolutely. I will show you that as soon as we get one of the products in here and uh, we'll go and show you that in the presentation area. All right. so. I'm going to make this a marketing report. I will call it cost of waiting. Now when you're doing a marketing report you can actually skip quite a few of the fields. You're not taking an application, you're not interviewing your borrower, so you can actually you can skip quite a few of these. Anything that's in red is a required field, but the ones in black are not required. There's certain ones you definitely want to have in there. For instance, if I know that this particular presentation I'm going to be sending out to all the clients that work with myself and you know Joe Smith over at uh, Remax, I want to make sure and put my partner's email address in here. So jsmith at remax.com. And the reason I'm going to do that is when I get to the end of the presentation, I can select whether I want to be notified when this is viewed, and I can also select whether I want my partner to be notified. And that partner email address is how they're going to get notified when this presentation is clicked. Now, it's not going to tell them who clicked it. It's going to tell them how long it was viewed, and it's going to show them how many clicks they got. So what this is for is to show them how much traction you're getting. Anytime you have a partnership, obviously, you know, the, the end results are, are you closing more deals because of it? Are you capturing more of an audience because of it? This is a great way to show them that, yes, in fact, look at all these clicks we're getting. We are capturing a wider audience because of this. And, of course, when you look at the numbers afterwards, you'll be able to justify that down the line. You can look back and say, you know, I've been working with you for, for three months now, and of the, you know, we, we started off with just one person that we were talking to. We've closed five deals since then. So, you know, keep, keep this in mind. It's a great selling point for you. Now, friendly name, I would actually put who I sent this to, so, you know, where I posted it. So I would put, say, posted to Facebook uh, for John Smith. Now, the goals section, because this is going to be a purchase, I'm just going to select the purchase goal. Now, this eliminates the need to enter a current mortgage, and you won't get that empty current mortgage slot showing up on your report. So anytime you're doing a purchase, make sure to select this goal. The assumptions. Current property value, this is going to be my base purchase price. So remember, I'm going to be showing a couple of different pricing options, a couple of different rate options for this cost of waiting. But I do want to have one that defaults into the purchase price values when I get over into those, uh, those products. So let's say that this is a $300,000 house. I don't need to fill out the fields in black here. Those are more related to refinance questions. Now, because it's a marketing presentation, I probably don't need anything in here, but if you do want to show the tax benefit on the report, you can make an assumption of what tax bracket you're, you're targeting. And again, you probably just want to you know, kind of get an idea of what the median income levels are in the areas that you're targeting. And if you need to find out what those are, 
hit find tax bracket here. It's going to take you over to a site that shows you a pretty pretty easy way to look at it. You know, if we're looking at between 36,000 and 87,000 for a single person, that's going to put them in the 25% tax bracket. And that covers a pretty wide array of people. So I think I would probably end up using the 25% bracket. So I'll jump back over to Edge. I'll put in my 25% there. And remember, you're going to enter this as a whole number. Don't enter it as a decimal. It'll, uh, <laughs> it'll produce a really small tax advantage. Now we can skip the mins and maxes. We're not interviewing the client, so we're going to go straight over to our product screen. Now this one's going to be the buy now, and we'll make this an FHA loan. Now because it's an FHA, I need to make sure and check this radio button that yes, it is FHA. This is going to open up the upfront MIP section in the next screen. Now at this point, I can enter my down payment as a dollar amount, or I can toggle it over to percentage by clicking this percentage button. So I'll put in my 3.5% down. And let's say that right now I can get them about a 4.5% rate. And this is going to be a 30-year term. Now when I get to the next screen, and for marketing reports, you can ballpark these if you want or apply a template. I like using templates because it's a lot easier. You don't have to calculate anything, and you can just basically plug it in. So I'm going to go into my closing cost detail here. And you can see I've got a bunch of different templates in here. Actually, quite a few. Now, once you've got your templates created, this is going to make it a world easier for you. If you don't have templates created, I'd like you to take a look at one of the videos in our support center. So this one is how to create and use fee templates. That's the basics. I'd also like you to watch the how to copy fee templates. You see, there's no reason you should have to do this data entry every single time. But the primary one I want you to check out, what's the best way to start creating my fee templates? This one actually shows you how to take your, a past GFE or a past fee worksheet and use that to start itemizing your fees to create a template based on that product. So it's going to show you each and every step of the process to get those in play. Now once you've got one in there, you can copy that to a new template, make minor, minor modifications, and then now you've got two different templates ready to go. All right, so I won't go through template creation today, but I would like you to check those videos out if you've not created any templates yet. So for this one, I'm just going to apply one of my templates here. And you can see that all my figures popped in. The one thing I do need to do is estimate some hazarding tax reserves. So say 250 for the hazard reserves and about 500 for the tax reserves, probably a little bit more than that. But again, I'm just estimating for this one. Then I'm, re then I'm going to hit apply to loan. Now the last part here in this screen is I need to make sure and account for the upfront MIP. You notice I did not have that in my fee detail. That doesn't belong in the fee detail. You want to put it right here. So I'm going to put this in as a percentage. And as soon as you tab off that field, you'll see that a checkbox opens up that allows you to finance this into the loan. So this is going to effectively increase my, my total LTV from 96.5 to 98.1. Now keep in mind for FHA guidelines, it's okay to do that. It's still a 96.5% LTV uh, in terms of what FHA expects because the upfront MIP is not included in that calculation. Now last part here, put your monthly costs or choose not to put monthly costs at all. If you're going to do that, just make sure and keep it uniform across the board. Love using these factor percentages because it makes it much easier. You can just basically estimate based on your particular area. In California here, you know, we use uh, hazard insurance, we use 0.35. Uh, when I used to underwrite, I always just used 80 when I was pre calling somebody. So um, it's up to you on what you want to use for your hazard insurance. I like to use these ratios because they tend to stay pretty constant. And if I'm doing, if I'm doing copies, so I'm copying this program to another one, my property tax in particular, that one's going gonna, gonna to fluctuate depending on the purchase price. So I need to make sure that uh, I have a ratio in there so it calculates the property tax correctly for me. Now last part here and probably the most important part of doing FHA loans is the mortgage insurance. And if you've not done an FHA loan yet or if you've not seen the FHA uh, uh, video on data entry, this one's definitely one you're going to watch right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my factor and you'll need to refer to your FHA guidelines for what the factor percentages are based on the LTV that you're looking at. I happen to know that this one is 1.35. Now when you tab off that field, the MI cutoff percentage on an FHA loan 
it's inconsequential for this high LTV. It doesn't matter. I can leave it in there or I can, or I can pull it out. But this checkbox is incredibly important for all government loans that require MI. Now, that's FHA loans and USDA. You're going to make sure you check this box. So calc, on, calc MI on the balance, you notice it changed my mortgage insurance here. If you look in your loan origination system and you input this exact same scenario, if you don't check this box, the mortgage insurance is not going to match. If you do check it, it will match. And again, this is only for government loans. For conventionals, you're going to leave this unchecked. Now what this does, just to give you a basic explanation of it, is every year on FHA loans, the MLI payment is calculated based on the last average 12 months of the loan balance. Now what this means, especially for the first payment, is that it's it's actually looking forward for 12 months, creating an average on that, and that's what you're getting for your first year of mortgage, and pay, mortgage insurance payments. And when you get to the second year, it's actually going to stay fairly the same. It's not going to change very much. Um, but it does change slightly. And if you were to compare an amortization inside edge to the one in your loan origination system, you'll see that this flows on exactly the same level. Now, very critical for FHA loans, especially the high LTV ones like this, it has to run for the entire term of the loan. So I'm going to tell this that it cannot cut the MI off until month 360. That's the last payment of this loan. Now, if this was a low LTV FHA loan, meaning it's under 90%, they're actually only required to carry it for 11 years, then it can drop at the 78% mark. So if that's the case, you would put a 132 in this box. What happens is after month 132, if your LTV is below 78 or if it's at 78, it's going to cut off the mortgage insurance. All right, so I've entered my buy now option. I'm going to enter another product. Uh, Roz is saying, for some reason, I'm getting 323.24 uh, when checking the MI calc. I'd have to see your particular presentation, Roz. I assume you're, you're using the exact same figures I am, but I'd need to see it specifically to, to isolate what might have happened there. But um, let's check that out after the call. If you would, Roz, just send me a link to your presentation. I'll check that out for you and make sure everything's spot on. So let's add one more product. Now it's up to you on how many products that you'd like to put in here. You can put, you know, a, a whole bunch of them. You can put up to four of them. But I've seen a lot of these that come across with just two products. There's a buy now, and then there's a worst case. What happens if you wait? And as you saw earlier when we were showing Brad's presentation, he, he was using very minimal products too. He had a buy now versus wait. He had a third product though, which showed what the loss of buying power was based on that rate from waiting. Now I'm going to show you four different options here, and you can choose. You can pick and choose the ones you want to use. The buy now option, that's the most important. Got to have that one in place. But your comparative options, I'm going to call this one wait for drop. So this is the borrower is under some delusion that <laughs> prices are dropping in the housing market right now because there's plenty of inventory. <laughs> Obviously not true. But if you wanted to show them what would happen, okay, let's wait for a drop. Let's say this, this particular area that the borrower is looking at is actually looking at some price reductions. They're, you know, the houses aren't moving. Um, maybe there's been a downgrade in, in, in just the basic area. The neighborhood's kind of going to hell in a handbasket or something like that. In a case like that, okay, let's show them what it would look like. So I'm going to use my copy button, and I will copy from my Buy Now product. Now once I hit OK, it pulled in the Buy Now product exactly the same, so all I have to do is make some modifications here. So let's assume that they waited for a drop, and it actually did. So I'm going to drop the price to 290. Now in that same time period that they were waiting, because it could have been a month, could have been two months, whatever, um, this, this interest rate could potentially go up. And if you guys have been watching the Rate Watch lately, you've seen that it's very volatile right now, and there's potential changes of up to a quarter point per day. So Keep it in mind, over the course of a month, there's a, a very real possibility it can move an entire point. It's up to you on what you want to use for your interest rate change. I've seen everything from a half a point change to a full point change. To, I actually saw one come across my desk with a point and a half change. Probably a little unrealistic, but hey, more power to you if you can get it across. But I'm going to go ahead and use uh, 0.75 for this. So 5.25 will be my new rate. So if they waited for that $10,000 drop, for two months, let's say, I'm anticipating the rate could potentially go up by three quarters of a point. Now, because I use the copy button, I don't really need to do anything in here. My closing costs are already in. My upfront MIP is already calculated. 
And the last part here, since I used that copy button, you can see it automatically updated my property tax, it updated my mortgage insurance, and my variables are all still there. So I don't have to do anything with this. So let's add another product. Now we've had the conversation of what it looks like when you buy right now. We've had the conversation of what it looks like if you potentially wait for a drop and you get the drop, but in that same time period, the rate goes up. So now let's talk about what happens if you wait for that drop and it never dropped. So I'll call this one no drop. And I'm going to copy from that buy now product again. And this time I'm not going to change the purchase price. They waited for the drop, but it didn't happen. But in that, that two months that they were waiting, that rate went up. Again, because I used the copy button, these next screens are already populated for me. I don't need to do anything with those. I'm going to go ahead and add another product. Now this one, I'm going to call it worst case. And we'll use the copy from button again and we'll copy the buy now FHA. Now the worst case in my conversation would be we showed you what would look like if you bought now. We showed you what it would look like if you waited for a $10,000 price drop. We showed you what it would look like if there was no drop. What about the worst case? What if there's a bidding war and the price goes up? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this purchase price to 310. Now it's up to you on what you want to use for the purchase price rise. I would say just to keep it kind of equal across all the all the levels, I like to use the same amount for my increase versus my decrease. So when I was waiting for the drop, I was waiting for a $10,000 drop. On my worst case, I'm only going to project a $10,000 worst case up. We'll change our rate accordingly. And this product is done. So now at this point, I'm going to run over to our analysis screen. And you can see we've got this, this really cool staircase looking thing. And this is because of the way I did this. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this question does come across the support desk quite often, is can I reorder these products? There's no way to reorder them. What you'd actually have to do is use the copy button to copy one product over another. Now, if you've only got three products entered, you use the fourth product slot for your copy slot, kind of like using a clipboard. If you've already got four products, you're going to have to overwrite one of them, which means you're going to have to redo the data entry on one of the products. Now in this case, I know I entered this in the correct order because I'm seeing this perfect staircase and me, just how I am, I, I love seeing it this way. I, I don't want to see up and down, but it's up to you. I mean, uh, you guys can choose your own methods on these. I will show you that there are options on, on how you want to benchmark these. Right now, you can see the buy now is saving $213 a month and just the pity payment versus our worst case. So it's a great conversation to have with the borrower. Hey, if you buy now, you're going to save you know, 200 bucks on, on what could potentially happen in two months. But there's another side of that option, and that's show them the pain. So if you change your benchmark to buy now, if you wait for a drop, it's going to cost you 56 bucks. No drop, it's going to cost you $134 a month. Worst case, it's going to cost you $213 extra per month. Now you can do the same thing in the short-term area. By now, it's showing that there's a 10, 000, almost $11,000 difference in interest in MI between this buy now and the worst case, which is used as the benchmark right now. If I want to show them the pain of waiting, I can switch those around. It's going to cost you almost $11,000 more if you wait. Now, by default, your long-term interest in MI paid is going to be selected. If you wanted to show them net worth, you can. It kind of doesn't make sense on a cost of waiting analysis because you can see that they actually have a higher net worth in the worst case because they've purchased the property at a higher value. Total principal paid, probably not going to mean a whole lot when you're pitching a cost of waiting. You're really looking at isolating the cost, not necessarily what the potential gains are for each one. So I would say leave this one on total interest in MI paid. Now you can completely bypass the contact screen. This is a marketing report, so I don't need to put anything in here. So I'm going to go straight over to my presentation screens. Now, very important, make sure to include payment notes here. For compliance, you got to let them know whether those payments are pity payments or if they're just P&I. Um, there might be additional verbiage that your compliance department requires you to disclose. Uh, for instance, I know that a couple of our larger organizations require all their LOs in this area to put what the qualifying FICO score would be, uh, what the LTV basis is, and um, you know maybe a couple of other 
qualifying factors, you know, or even saying that, the, you know, these, these taxes and insurance are estimates, you know, uh, we'll, we'll narrow down the fine details once we, once we get you the GFE. But remember, this is meant to be used as pre-GFE. So any, more, any extra disclaiming you can do on these is always going to help you. So I did include the taxes and insurance in the payment, so I'm going to remove this part. And my payment notes are ready to go. Now I should point out that you can actually choose which options you want to show. So remember, we couldn't reorder them. But what if I decided after all this that all I really want to show is a best and a worst case? All I'd have to do is uncheck these boxes and they will not show up on the presentation. Now I'm going to keep them checked for right now so we can go through the, the entire process. Then I'll come back and uncheck them so you can see what it looks like. Now at this point, you're given the option to add additional verbiage around what these segments are. Now this shows up under the More Info sections in your live presentation. So for instance here, I've got additional notes that it may include. I would probably remove this because I've already told them it does include taxes and insurance. Um, I might put a little, little color around what these pity payments are against each other, but I think this is sufficient right here. Short term area. This is one where I would probably would add additional verbiage to let them know what these savings are. You guys may have noticed that the monthly savings multiplied by 60 is not going to give you the 60 month savings. The monthly savings is just the pity payments compared against each other. The total cost savings, which is that short term area, it's a little bit different. It's only comparing the unrecoverable parts that they're paying. That's interest, MI, and closing costs. So we don't factor in principal there because they're retaining that in the form of equity. We also subtract out the tax benefit from that equation if you choose to show it. So the totals here are significantly different than just taking the monthly savings and multiplying it out. So I might put a little bit of extra verbiage in here just to explain what that is. Long term area, I think I would leave this exactly as is, but you are given the option to change this again if you want to. Um, I would say, again, choose the total interest in MI paid. It's going to be your best bet for this presentation. And now we get to delivery mode. What do we want to do with this? Now I will tell you that email link is what you should choose initially. And the reason for this is you want to be able to generate a link. Now the link is your live link that you send to your borrower. This is what allows them to open the presentation on their mobile devices. This is what allows you to get the notification alerts. And also, if you choose to, allows your partner to get the notification alerts. If you don't generate a link, all you're going to get is a print or a PDF. That's not dynamic anymore. We're past that. That was 80s. So I would tell you there's going to be people that absolutely require a print job. That's why we give it to you. There's going to be people that absolutely require a PDF. It's going to look fuzzy. I want to tell you that right now. Neither of these options is as good as the email link option. Beyond that, the email link is dynamic. You change something inside Edge, you don't have to reissue a new presentation that same email link will show your new updated information. If I go in and change rates, if I go in and uh, you know, get rid of a couple of the, uh, the purchase options I'm showing, my borrower clicks the link, it's going to show what's inside Edge. So it, it can be modified on the fly. Now the notifications box. I do want to be notified when this report is viewed. I'm disabling the call button on this particular one, but if you'd like more information about what this is, check out in our knowledge base. Just type in call, and there it is. What is the click to call feature? And then how to use it for lead capture. So it just gives you some, some basics on what that feature is, how you can use it. Uh, by default, you guys all have three credits uh, to use these calls. And then once those are exhausted, you won't see the option for the checkbox anymore. Um, but you have an option to purchase more if you want through your settings area. You'll see that there's a click to call tab in there that allows you to purchase. Now, we never just ding you. so you won't even have the option to use it unless you have credits available. Which means in order to actually make a purchase, you have to trigger a purchase by going into the settings, actually hitting the purchase button, and entering your purchase details. This will never be charged back to your company either if you guys are in an organization. It's going to actually prompt you for your personal billing for this. Now, send Edge View alert to a partner. Remember, I, uh, I entered that email on the first screen for my partner. That's why this is showing up. Had I not entered that email, this option would not be there. I'm going to uncheck it right now because I don't know if J. Smith at Remax happens to be a real address, so I don't want him getting that. Last part, select a quote date. 
cover yourself. So when you uh, when you put out any of these presentations inside Edge, make sure you've got a quote date on it. Anytime you put out a rate and a payment, if you don't have a quote date on there, there's no telling when those rates were effective for. So this just covers you. Now once you've got your quote date, hit the generate link button. Now this is the one that's going to give you that short link. Now this short link is the one that if this was my marketing presentation that I wanted to share with realtor partners, this is one of the ones I'd put in that email to myself so I can easily pull this up later. Now you also have the, the, the ability to use Edge Live and add audio and video. I would tell you for marketing presentations, definitely add audio video. Even if you're not comfortable with video, add audio. Give it something. If the presentation is just floating around and it doesn't have your advice on it, it can be misconstrued. So make sure that you've got your advice following this so that if it's shared across multiple platforms, so your realtor just decides to start giving this link out to all the clients so that they can see what it is, well, if the client looks at it and has no idea what you're trying to tell them, it's not going to make any sense. You're going to lose the traction. So make sure you accompany this with at least an audio. Now, for those of you who are scared of doing video because you think you don't look good on camera, I hate to tell you this, but you look exactly the same on camera as you do in real life. You're willing to meet with these people face-to-face. -face. There's no difference with being on camera. Now, another thing about it is when you're on camera talking to them, there's no assumption that you're a video expert. The only assumption is that that's you talking. So you, you want to keep it light. You know, don't, don't feel like you have to spend nine hours creating the perfect video. You might do a couple of takes if you, if you happen to make a, a huge mistake, but if you make a little minor mistake, it's actually it's kind of an effective tool to use because it you know, humanizes you a little bit more. You know, you've got that, uh, it kind of pulls you down off the level that, oh my God, this is, he's so crazy with his technology, I don't even know what he's doing. But a little mistake here and there, okay, now it's humanized. But keep the eye contact during the video. It's incredibly important because it looks like you're talking directly to the client. Uh, when you drop off eye contact, it makes it a lot more difficult. Now to add audio and video, if you've never done this before, you're going to click on this button. It's going to generate a preview of the Edge presentation. Now you'll notice that at the bottom left, there's a record message button. Now before you do this, right click anywhere on your presentation and hit settings. Now when you do that, it's going to open up your flash settings. This is where you choose what camera and what mic you're going to use. Now, I've got two different cameras on my machine. I've got an integrated webcam, which is part of my laptop, and I've got a plug-in webcam, which I prefer to use because it's a better webcam, and because my laptop is always on a dock, so it's closed, the, the top is closed. So if I was to use my integrated cam, it would just be a black screen right now. But the life cam, that's the one on top of my monitors, that's the one I'm going to use. For the microphone, I've got lots of mics on my system right now, so I would want to make sure and choose the appropriate one. Now the one I'm talking to you on right now through GoToMeeting happens to be this guy down here. But I want to select my live cam, my webcam, to be my microphone. And you can see it's bouncing here. That's how I know it's receiving information. That's how you can confirm you've, you've chosen the appropriate mic. Now the other options in here, local storage, probably no reason to even, even modify this. If you want, you can max it out though. It's not going to hurt anything. It won't store, store more than... I would say 500k on your computer at the most, so that's smaller than an email. Uh, privacy options. You want to select allow and remember, so you're not asked this every time you try to record. And then this far left option, for the most part you're going to leave this enabled. If you've got a computer that's you know seven, eight years old and it's got an old video card in it and you're starting to get green lines across your video, try unchecking this box and it'll probably clear that up for you. But for most of you out there, 99% of you, you're going to leave this checked. All right, so I've got myself set up. I'm ready to roll. I'm going to hit record message. And there I am. Hi, everybody. So you can see that one thing that's very important is if I'm looking down at my presentation, meaning I'm doing this kind of thing while I'm trying to explain it, I've lost the eye contact with you guys. Once I look up at you and I'm talking to you, now you feel like I'm talking to you. I'm no longer just talking to my report. So you can see how critical eye contact becomes. Now, one of the cool features that we've just added for you, and this was only a couple of weeks ago when we released Edge again, is you can now use the record button to start and stop the recording. The really cool part about this is you don't have to look back to the presentation to try and find that record button. So you start it by hovering your, your mouse over the record button, hit record, and you're going to start recording. And you'll see that your webcam will actually blink the little light. 
for just a moment and then it'll stop blinking and it's just recording. When you're done, as long as you don't move your mouse while you're talking, you can click it again and it's going to stop the recording. Beautiful. Look at that. I didn't even have to look away for the entire time I was recording. Now, once you've hit stop there, that presentation is part of your Edge, edge report. So if you were to send that link, that video is automatically going to pop up for you. Now if you wanted to go in and delete a video, all you do is bring up this record message again, and you can do this if you're, if you're completely out of this presentation, you've gone on to another client, you just go back into the Edge Wizard to the client you're working on, and you're going to come back to this screen here where you generated the link, hit Add Audio Video again so you can get back to your preview, you're going to click Record Message one more time, then you're going to hit this little trash can icon. Once you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to delete it. Yes, I do. Okay, it's deleted. It's no longer part of your report. All right, so that is video production in a nutshell there. Now, there are some quick tips and pointers I do want to give you on what to do with your video. I already told you about eye contact. That's incredibly important. Um, another very important part is the lighting in your office. If you've got a giant window right behind your desk and you've got the, the curtains open, you've got the blinds open, it's going to be a floodlight right behind your head, which is going to kind of wash you out and make you look pale. So I, I would advise close the curtains, close, close the blinds wherever you're recording. Um, make sure your backdrop is appropriate too. I mean, if, you're, if your office is really, really messy right behind your desk, you've got a bunch of file cabinets and papers all over the place, they're going to see that. So keep it in mind, you might want to just turn your desk around or maybe turn your laptop around so you can record the other direction. Maybe you've got a plant or something behind you. Um, just make sure you're aware of your surroundings. Also, when you're recording, there's a bunch of things you need to turn off so you're not interrupted. One is the ringer on your, on your mobile phone and the ringer on your desk phone. Those are going to really get under your skin if they're sitting there ringing in the middle of a video that you thought was spectacular and you have to re-record it because now there's phones ringing in the middle of your video. So shut those things down so they don't bug you. Turn off any instant messenger programs that you have, Skype, AIM, whatever you're using. Turn those off while you're recording. One, it's going to stop you from getting notifications in the middle of recording. But two, it's also going to stop them from hogging the bandwidth on your internet, which means you're going to get a better streaming video. Now, I would also advise that anytime you're doing recording, try and minimize what you're doing on your computer so you're just focusing on this presentation. Say, for instance, you've got ACT open because it's your database manager. Close it down. It's taking up 400 megs of memory on your computer. You don't need it taking up that much. Close it down while you're doing the video recording. You know, if you have to, close down Outlook. You know, make sure that the, the critical items that are running on your machine are still running, but anything that's superfluous, just shut them down. It's going to make it a lot easier. You're going to have a more fluid presentation, and things are going to look right on the outside. Now, the last thing I will tell you is make sure you cross-sell your realtor partner during the video. You know, mention them. Mention the relationship that you have with them. Mention why this person is even viewing your video is because of this relationship with that person. You know, beef them up. Now, remember, when they get an edge partner alert, it's going to alert them that the report's been viewed. It's going to tell them for how long it's been viewed, and it's going to give them a link to the presentation. So they can click on that, and they're going to see your video. So make sure you cross-sell them, because all this is going to do is make sure that you're top of mind for them next time they're having this conversation with their partner. Now, finally, and probably most important, at the end of the video, don't close it with a question. Don't close it with a reason for them not to call you. Give them a solid call to action. You know, Call me today as soon as you're done viewing this presentation so that we can go over all the fine details, fine-tune this, and make sure that you can distribute this to your clients as well. Simple. It doesn't take a whole lot, but don't leave it open to them. You know, if I see this come across my desk all the time. You know, if you have any questions about this report, feel free to call me. Well, <laughs> I've been free since I was born. I do have questions about this report, but, you know, maybe I don't, I don't feel like calling you. I'll do it later. No, no, you've lost it. Give them the call to action. Make sure that they understand that this is important, that you've spent time putting this together, and that you'd appreciate their feedback on it. That's a great way to, to attack it. You know, If you're listening feedback, everybody likes giving feedback on something because they don't have to do any work for it. All they're doing is making suggestions on what, what they'd like to see. It's a great way to get them to call you right away. So with that said, we're a little, well, actually we're right at 10 o'clock here, just a little past. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap for today. If you guys have additional questions, you can always go to our support center. You can lodge a ticket there. If you don't find what you're looking for, hit submit a request. You can submit a ticket. 
um, there is actually even a video recorder in here. So when you submit your ticket, you can record a screencast of your screen. If you're running into a problem that uh, you can't quite adequately, adequately explain in the, in the text area here, do a video of it. You know, this will, this will actually open up a little Java recorder that allows you to record your screen. So it's screen capture. You can show me exactly what's going on in Edge, and either myself or the rest of the support team will be able to see it and immediately get back to you and give you a solid resolution. So with that said, let's go ahead and wrap for today. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone. Please do join again next week. And if you've got additional questions or you'd like to see topics covered, um, make sure that uh, you send us an email on it. Oh, Roz, thank you for getting back to me. He said he found the mistake. The MI is good. Thank you. I appreciate the follow-up, Roz. Um, but if you do have a topic that you'd like covered next week, shoot us an email over at support. We'd be happy to cover it for you. So with that said, have a wonderful day, everyone, and let us know if we can help in any way. Thank you.